Hokage's mistakes. The seven previous Hokages are all powerful at first glance, and we can only assume that they are shinobi with a wealth of knowledge and experience necessary to rule their villages. However, although they try to find their own way out of the troublesome events surrounding the Hidden Leaf, they don't always succeed, and most often drag the problem to the next generation and so on. This time, we're going to mercilessly expose the mistakes of the past Hokages. However, since the Hokage is at the top of the Hidden Leaf, if they do something wrong, it'll make them stand out even more. As a preface, I'd like to say that all of the previous Hokages have contributed greatly to the Shinobi world in their own way, and also have accomplished great things. Today's video only focuses on their blunders, but it doesn't mean we're denying their accomplishments. This time, we'll tell you about each of the Hokages in order of the least offenses. At the end, we'll show you the big screw-up that could be said to have resulted in the fourth great ninja war. So if you'd like to know more, stay tuned. Let's get right into the disgraces of the past Hokages. The seventh, Uzumaki Naruto. We're a little relieved that Naruto is going to be the last Hokage on the list. Well, if we're talking about the number of misdeeds, then Naruto may have won. But in terms of gravity of his blunders, it is probably incomparable to any other Hokages in history. He is very active as a main character should be, and naturally has been doing mischief from the very first episode. First, he steals the forbidden jutsu. He would have died in the first episode had he not possessed his bloodline and the tailed beast. From there on, it was all insignificant. Rather than a screw-up, it was merely him embarrassing himself. But since he became a Hokage, he's been making a bit of screw-ups. First of all, he couldn't forsake his personal feelings and still protect Sasuke, a rogue shinobi, even after he became the Seven Hokage. Orochimaru and Kabuto are both also left to themselves. All three of them were former terrorists of the highest level. It may be a good idea for the top management not to dwell on the past, but if we're looking from the safety of the village, then we guess we'll have to wait and see if this is a blunder or not by watching Boruto from now on. The third, Sarutobi Hiruzen. He was the only one to return and be reappointed as a Hokage because of the early death of the fourth. He was also the Hokage at the start of the Naruto series. In the beginning of the series, the main stage of the story was just the academy, and there were no conflicts in the Hidden Leaf Village, so there weren't any combative appearances for Hiruzen. However, the third was probably having too much fun even with all of this extra free time. For example, leaving the main character Naruto alone. It didn't take in Naruto who is actually the child of the late fourth Hokage and also the Jinchuriki that seals the tailed beast. The follow-up on Naruto's mental state was left entirely to Iruka. We're sure he'd have easily become an enemy of the village if Akatsuki had beckoned to him when he was just a lonely child. Moreover, Hiruzen tacitly acknowledged Orochimaru's falling to the dark side. And for the reason that Orochimaru was his disciple, he overlooked Orochimaru's human experimentation even after they were discovered. In the Konoha Crush, Hiruzen regrets what he did and finally made up his mind about Orochimaru and fights for his life. However, Orochimaru survives and goes on to unleash his evil on the world. While it is regrettable that he only appeared when he was in his late years, his achievements when he was younger are not very clear, and thus his screw-ups inevitably stand out. The Sixth, Hatake Kakashi He is the sixth Hokage who took office after the fourth great ninja war. During Naruto's time, he was a jonin who tends to be the leader in battles. On a smaller scale, he did screw up at the beginning of the series, when Team 7 faced Zabuza. Of course, as Kakashi didn't know what was going on behind the scene in this mission, he couldn't prevent the fight itself. However, in the battle against Zabuza, he was surprisingly easily caught by the enemy's water prison jutsu, which left the newly graduate Team 7 to fight against Zabuza themselves. Had Sasuke and Naruto failed to free Kakashi, they would all undoubtedly be killed by Zabuza. Kakashi also has a screw-up that, while different from the intense scenes such as the battles, made an impact on us. We're talking about the way he treated Sasuke after Sasuke reunited and got beaten by Itachi, and then fought with Naruto. Does everyone remember the first time Orochimaru and Chidori almost collided and Kakashi stopped it? After that, he lectured Sasuke, but we feel that he should have been more strict about it. Shortly after the lecture, Sasuke decided to rely on Orochimaru after a sound shinobi contacted him. 
That's right, if Kakashi had been more strict and had stayed by his side a little longer, Sasuke might not have become a rogue shinobi. The severity of the screw-ups are slowly scaling up, but there are still four Hokages left, so prepare yourselves. The fifth, Senju Tsunade. One of the legendary Sanin and disciple of Hiruzen, her biggest mistake is, as expected, related to the mission to bring back Sasuke. Sasuke made his way to the Sound Ninja 4 and Orochimaru. Tsunade should have dealt with this problem as soon as she assumed position as to the Hokage. But on top of that, the village's strength had also been severely reduced due to Orochimaru's attack. With no option left, she gives the mission to retrieve Sasuke to a team consisting of the newly appointed Chunin, Shikamaru, and only Genins. Each and every member of Shikamaru's team played a major role in this mission, but Sasuke's retrieval ended in failure. No matter how chaotic the village was, if Tsunade herself had gone with them, the outcome might have been different. While we're at it, let us tell you about another mistake she could have made. When Jiraiya and Naruto were looking for Tsunade, she was almost taken in by Orochimaru's words. The deal that Orochimaru brought up was that, in exchange for Tsunade sealing his arm, he would bring back both her brother and boyfriend, who died in the war. Knowing that once his arm was healed, Orochimaru would attack the hidden leaf again. Tsunade almost agreed to his proposition, but eventually refused the deal. If Tsunade had accepted to heal Orochimaru's arm, rather than being the Hokage, she would have helped him in destroying the hidden leaf, which would have been quite dangerous. The first, Senjo Hashirama. The first Hokage, Senjo Hashirama, claimed as the god of Shinobi, one of the founders of the Hidden Leaf. Although Hashirama is a man of tremendous fighting ability, his only desire was to end the war and bring peace to his village. Could be said that his gentle nature was what caused the following mistake. In the decisive battle in the Valley of the End, Hashirama took on Madara and the Nine Tails at the same time in order to protect the village and won. However, the fault lies in Hashirama for failing to confirm Madara's death or seal his body. There was also the problem with Hashirama's cells or body cells that was given a name as it was a mass of chakra brimming with life energy. His cells were harvested by Madara before his death and by Orochimaru and Yakushi Kabuto after his death. His cells are still being used by the villains even after his death. If Hashirama had understood the preciousness of his abilities, he had sealed his body after death to prevent being used by his enemies, just like the Hyuga family. This situation would have never happened. The fourth, Namekaze Minato. Minato is the most popular Hokage in terms of appearance and personality. Some of you may wonder whether he has any fault and even want to deny him being listed in here. However, Minato actually did make a mistake that would later have a huge impact on the shinobi world. This involved the three-man cell, Kakashi, Obito, and Rin, whom he was entrusted to lead. This happened in the 27th volume extras. Kakashi was promoted to a jonin and Minato tells his team that from now on, they will be divided into two teams to carry out their missions. However, when the three of them are forced to leave their teacher, they are attacked by the Hidden Sand Shinobis. Rin was kidnapped and Kakashi and Obito fought. The two later made up, but Obito ended up losing his life to save Rin. Minato rushes in later and pulls Kakashi out of a pinch after rescuing Rin, but was unable to save Obito. While the Hidden Leaf was lacking in resources due to the war, if the four of them had acted together, Obito wouldn't have died and the fourth great ninja war would have been a future that didn't happen. However, if he had done so, then the Naruto Shippuden arcs would be almost gone. So as a reader, we can't really blame the fourth for that. The second, Senju Tobirama. Mr. Despicable, as he is called, you would probably get a bad feeling when hearing such a name. He is one to be known due to having developed many ninjutsu and forbidden arts. One of them is the jutsu that made Madara's resurrection possible is the worldly resurrection. It is true that without the worldly resurrection, Naruto's allied forces' strength would have been greatly reduced in the fourth great ninja war. But if the worldly resurrection had not been developed in the first place, the war itself would not have happened. That's right, Tobirama's screw-ups was the trigger resulting in our favorite characters such as Neji being taken away. Of course, he intended to use this jutsu in a clever way against the villages that Konoha were hostile to. 
In the end, even Tobirama himself was resurrected by Orochimaru with the worldly resurrection and have no choice but to become directly involved in Hiruzen's death. This episode alone is a tragedy in itself. But when he nominated Hiruzen to be the next head of the village before he died, he didn't take into account Danzo's competitive personality, which ended with Danzo almost taking over the Konoha village. When he was resurrected in the fourth great ninja war, Tobirama, who was supposed to be upset when he realized this huge mistake, he only said it will be clearer if Madara is resurrected through worldly resurrection and showed no signs of remorse. This is all for our summary on the screw-ups done by the successive Hokages. It's been quite a messy history of the Hokages. It's almost as if this epic drama was created because of all the things the Hokages did in each era. It really makes us think, were they really the right person to be the Hokage? We personally think that it's questionable for Tobirama, who developed the Jutsu to bring back the dead, which is too problematic to matter how we see it to be the Hokage. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section which shinobi you think should have been the Hokage. We'll be posting more videos like this one where you can learn more about Naruto, including character rankings, discussions, and riddles, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Looking back at it this way, there's still a lot of interesting things about Naruto. So let's enjoy together as fans.